Hello traders, this is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. I think it's come time to revisit one of my top trades for 2014, which I had presented to you uh, both in article form over the holiday period and also in the e one of the year-end wrap-up uh, videos, particularly the strategy video. But it is time to revisit it because the Aussie Kiwi continues to push to significant lows, and that level of volatility in the push that we are getting from this is driving us down into a very significant level of uh, support. I think that this currency pair is oversold, but think about this. We are talking about a trade that has, uh, and we'll cover it again, is looking at multiple years of price action to determine its fundamental and technical bearings. So it is not a trade that is going to just all of a sudden take uh, set up in a single day. All right. Remember that as we look at this currency pair. But taking a look at the standard daily chart, obviously we've seen some significant volatility, particularly over the past 24 hours, another extended move to the downside. This was instigated by the very disappointing Australian employment figures. Now, there's a lot to look into or read into with that particular set of data. Uh, will it necessarily lead the RBA to further rate cuts? Because that has been one of the biggest drivers for the Aussie dollar and its significant losses as of late. Unlikely, but that's not the kind of consideration we're going to get too deeply into. Whether there's going to be one or uh, you know, one rate hike left in their uh, in their regime, or whether they're going to start to turn. We're going to be looking at this in a bigger picture. All right. So when we assess the, the technical position, we'll look at that first. All right, let's see what we're looking at here. On a daily chart, only looking back about six, seven, eight months, you can see that there is no real uh, indication that this is an, an immediate bottom. All right, this is the kind of warning I want to deliver you. You look at this, and there's nothing that says this has to turn right now. All right, we are pitched into momentum, that uh, trend is very, very concerted. It has a lot of momentum behind it. So it's not something that we would immediately call a signal that it's turning. All right. But if we start to zoom out, that's when things get a little bit interesting. All right. Now we're going back to the uh, limitations of the data that I have. It goes back uh, approximately to, to the beginning of uh, this century. You can see that there is some noteworthy support down there at about 105.50 uh, to 104.50. All right, so it, it's about that area. That's noteworthy. All right, but just because we reach a zone of support does not necessarily mean that we are going to see an immediate turnaround. All right, just as, as if we were looking at a uh, an hourly chart or a 15-minute chart, we wouldn't necessarily assume that because we uh, dropped into a zone support that it was going to immediately turn. Sometimes it can move all the way to the bottom of that zone support. Sometimes it can uh, push a little bit through it before it eventually makes a turn. Now, of course, when we're talking about that, that 60 minute chart, that one hour time frame chart, that zone of support is typically 5, 10, 15 pips wide. All right, this zone of support is 100 pips. And of course, if we go a little bit below that, it, it broadens that uh, field a little bit wider. All right, so that's the technical picture just from the limitations of the daily chart that I have here. Let's look at it going back to the full scale of the historical monthly data that I have. You can see that that 104.50, 105.50 level is pretty prominent. Uh, if I were to extend the swing lows that we've gotten back here, these are on a closed basis, we actually would see a projection at 104. All right, so as you can see, if we just follow technicals at their word, we could see potentially a further dip down towards 104, maybe even a little bit lower. All right. Turns occur when we have a change in a meaningful change in fundamentals or when we exhaust trends. Now we're going to look about uh, look at this on this big picture time frame about how we're going to establish whether we exhaust the trends and whether it's time to turn. But first I want to look at the fundamentals. There is good reasoning why the Aussie Kiwi is dropping. This is actually the two-year yield differential. You can see there's a big difference here, but it's because it's skewed uh, substantially. During the financial crisis, there was a uh, dramatic drop in the Aussie rate compared to the Kiwi rate. It, it took its time. It was a little bit uh, behind the curve. And you had this big uh, distended uh, differential. So when we 
drop that out of the picture because that was a very unique circumstance during that time frame, uh, we have a more straightforward approach to the two-year yield differential. Why do I choose two-year? Because that is essentially the time frame most central banks are expected to return to rate hikes. All right, so that is the, uh, and that's also the medium-term time frame for central banks. So looking at this, you can see that you're not necessarily you know, calling a bottom in the yield differentials uh, because obviously back in 2008, 2009, it was significantly lower. But even nixing that relationship back in 2007, uh, uh, before the crisis really started to unfold, uh, we did have higher yield differentials. So not necessarily a full-scale fundamental differential there that would suggest immediate reversion. The yield forecasts are even more uh, stable uh, you actually had yield forecasts that favored the Kiwi substantially more uh, in the end or second half of 2011. All right, this uh, differential is likely to correct, but we're, right now the RBNZ is expected to hike uh, somewhere to, on the order of 225 basis points over the coming uh, eight quarters. So they have a lot of hikes lined up. The RBA has zero. They're not expected to hike at all. I think that uh, no, uh, no expectation of hike is actually uh, undermining or, or underappreciating the, the forecast that we have for the RBA, but when the market is on top of that, when the market believes that, that's when we can move. All right? It's not about what we think, it's about when the markets and the masses come to the same realization. Of course, you want to get in front of that uh, curve, but you don't want to be the only one believing something is going to happen uh, because that is uh, a recipe, fundamental recipe for uh, having a losing trade. But we know fundamentally that the RBA is more likely in 12 months time uh, to be considering rate hikes rather than rate cuts. All right, That shift, we're in the middle of that transition right now, and it, you can definitely still get another rate cut from the RBA, uh, but it would have to come with some pretty extraordinary circumstances, uh, namely a drop-off in domestic uh, health for Australia as well as, or probably uh, being instigated by, a substantial decline in Chinese growth. All right, so those circumstances are always a possibility, but more likely the probabilities say that we are going to uh, stabilize in interest rate expectations. All right, so now let's turn back to technicals with that fundamental uh, view in mind. This is a monthly chart of the Aussie Kiwi, and as you see here, I have the 12-month moving average, or one-year uh, moving average. Now, this overstretched indica indicator, uh, which is probably what most people are going to immediately focus upon, is a measure of any time where spot Aussie Kiwi measured on a monthly basis, of course, is over 1,000 pips uh, higher or lower than the 12-month moving average. All right, so that would, in very simplistic terms, be considered a bout of oversold or overbought conditions. Right now, we're oversold. All right, we are substantially higher or wider on the current price than we were from the 12-month moving average. Now, as you can see, and I don't think it, it's difficult to point out, these instances are almost always indicators of major reversals. The problem is we've had instances where this has been very, very broad. All right, this is multiple months that this existed, this extreme lasted for multiple months. And there is one instance in this entire set of data where we actually did not see a truly dramatic reversal, though it was a modest reversal, uh, and that was earlier this year, or sorry, earlier 2013. So there are instances where this can uh, exist for a longer period of time. It tells us that a reversal is almost uh, certain, given the statistical bearings, uh, but it is timing that becomes exceptionally important. Now looking at the, uh, when calling a bottom, all right, which you never want to pick tops and bottoms, it's, uh, it's a, a, a practice in failed trades, essentially. When trying to, uh, to establish when a good probabil uh, probability of a turn is going to occur, there are two instances where we actually see uh, a turn is a high pro uh, the highest probability. One is when we exercise extraordinary volatility. So we have a 
uh, let's say a uh, extreme rally or extreme decline and it is clearly a move that is backed by excessive uh, excessive orders right so what you're doing is essentially flushing out one side of the market those flushes often uh, indicate a uh, eventual turn to reversal and it ex is accelerated because all the orders are flushed out in one go all right Looking at the one-month implied volatility here from the Aussie Kiwi, uh, we are not getting a flush. So if we flip this upside down, as you guys are probably pretty familiar with implied volatility at this point, you have an instance like this where the volatility really spiked down in 2008. We don't have that circumstance. We don't even have the 2011 or 2010 spike. All right, so this is not an extraordinary immediate reversion kind of threat. Same with momentum. You can see that momentum is still bearing down, but it is not at an extreme level and thereby indicative of an immediate turn. This was the 10 day and now this is the 20 day uh, comparison. So I'm not calling an immediate turn, in other words. Uh, this is still one of my favorite trades. I still think it has great upside potential. Uh, and certainly this chart is a very good indication of the potential that it does have, especially when you look at the relative support that we've had over the past uh, past decades. But you have to appreciate the time frame that this is on. Timing for entry is very much going to rely on a very different approach, not that extreme reversal, not that V bottom, although it's a possibility. What we need to see is the indications that the market is bottomed and turned. Now I shouldn't have to, uh, I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys what you look for in terms of the, uh, confirmed turns, but in general what I'm going to look for is uh, some tentative moves higher, all right? starting to break resistance uh, levels like up here at 109, or even just breaking former support at the very least as new resistance at 107.30. All right. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to leave 200 pips on the table. Remember the scope of the trade. All right. 200 pips for confirmation is nothing compared to what the size, of the, actual, uh, the size of the actual range is. This is thousands of pips wide, and this has take, uh, taken months to develop, years to develop. All right. This is a larger scale trade. This is not one that we're looking at on a 60-minute chart. It is not appropriate for the time frame. It is not appropriate for the target. So I'm willing to give up 200, 300, 400 pips for confirmation to make this a higher probability trade so that I can make much, much more in potential return. All right. So the lesson here in terms of the strategy in the strategy video is this is a, a larger scale trade setup. All right. Knowing your time frame is exceptionally important because uh, if I'm placing a trade on a 60 minute chart, I would normally expect it to last me only, let's say, a couple days at most because that's the scale for which I am looking at that setup. And presumably, the technicals fit within that scale. And the fundamentals would naturally be within that scale. But I'm looking at a monthly chart all right, to see the full scale of this. It might take weeks, if not months, for this trade to play out. So keep that in mind. All right. Keep your eye on this trade. This is going to be an interesting trade. It's not, it's not necessarily setting up right now, but it's very close and is giving us some pretty extreme readings depending on what you're looking at. We'll do another strategy video tomorrow. In the meantime, go with trading out there, and I'll talk to you once again tomorrow.